then you got to get him to work on Linux. Yeah. <laughs> you got to you got to maintain office. compatibility. You what? LibreOffice. They have LibreOffice, yeah. um, but it doesn't always. Yeah. But well, the reason why I know that is because um, I did some work with my mom's company, and um, some they had they always end up getting viruses and stuff on their Windows laptops. And so, um, anyways, so the big issue was getting uh, Microsoft Word and et cetera to work on there. And like, so for years I've been trying to get Microsoft Word and stuff to work, and now it's much simpler than it used to be. Yeah. So. I know Interesting. Why I'm getting those things to work on those because yeah. for her she does healthcare work and so they have to open they have to open up and create word documents that has to be perfectly accurate. Yep. Like you can't like LibreOffice has a couple of every once in a while you'll notice problems. They'll try to convert it. Happen. Yeah. yeah. It can't happen for this work. So yeah. yeah. Could also do like a virtual machine I suppose, but right now yeah, I do a boot for yeah. Well, so when you're down there showing them this wonderful, you know, medical system and stuff, I suppose there's all kinds of other computer. Needs them, so it's not just the infrastructure, the the power and things like that. They need someone who can help them figure out how to, you know, use the keyboard and all the training like that. And yeah, um, you don't let the patients sit down and do anything. With no, them. it's always the nurses doing yep. it. Yep. Right? Yep. The patients. No, they, they have to. Yeah, is, uh, is the whole staff come with you guys, or is part of the staff down there already? So the local, do the locals make up some of the staff? Yes, um, because along with that perception of these groups is integrating with the locals. Yeah. So they do bring on some Haitian nurses and, okay. and stuff, yeah. Um, but I've, I've only been to Haiti once, um, so a lot of these trips bring, they go on their own, yeah. and it's, it's worked. <laughs> so you're leaving equipment down there for them to continue working on this? I want to. We haven't done that yet, though. Okay. Um, so you come yeah. in, you get a lot of patient information, and you take your equipment and your data with you, and... Yeah. Is the, the current hospital system down there, are they on an EMR? Um, yeah, so they have three hospitals that use an EMR called OpenMRS, um, and that's an open source EMR. Um, it's a little more complicated. They have a lot of modules, so they get into like closer to real hospital settings yeah. where they need real modules. And it's, it also requires some one study said about 24 hours of training to use. Um, so they are using those in some of the hospitals. Okay. Have you guys looked at um, like exporting your data to theirs? So if um, we've reached we've reached out to them um, for collaboration. We're waiting for a response. Okay. Yeah. Because their their software is also written in Java. I pulled down their codes. Pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, obviously, you have the power and internet access restrictions for some of these areas, but have you considered maybe going to areas where maybe that's not as difficult for them? There may be some people who have internet access, and so if they have internet access, then obviously we can take advantage of it. Um, but none of the groups have yeah. had that yet. <laughs> well, so if they have internet access, I mean, you could potentially take this software and just put it into a cloud environment, yep. you know, like an Amazon cloud yep. service. Well, right now you're running it on. I'm running it in a computer in my room. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And yeah, you could if they had internet. If this is a, like a, is it a formal Wayne State project? Um, no. Oh, okay. No, it's not formal Wayne State, um, but we go through, um, we work with a lot of... Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised they're not hosting it for you. Do you get funding from anybody? The grants that we're working on, that's all we've got. That's it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's kind of the awesomeness of open source is that people can You contribute. can still do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, is so there any thought of maybe providing like a, you know, a, a low-priced, uh, you know, commercial version of this? Is there any thought of um, that? Not at the moment, um, but the in terms of any kind of monetary value or business model, the closest we have to that is that fever in a box could be rented. Yeah. Um, and we haven't thought too hard about it. We're focused on making it work right now. I think, well, I think grants is probably... Yeah, a, a and that's been our, our route so far. We've, we've only been a nonprofit now for less than a year. Yeah. Um, so we're still working on submitting grants. I'm well, just thinking <coughs> the footprint that you have is a small one for just those that you're sending the physical equipment to. If you were to host it on a, a, a you know server that is cloud-based or whatever, you could open it up to a whole lot of other you know locations with internet access. With internet access, yeah, yeah. But his goal is really the really underserved places. That That's what we're targeting right now. Yeah, that just don't have the, the infrastructure to get on the cloud. 
that's kind of what we're targeting right now. Yeah. Um, but reaching out to those other groups, we'd have to see <coughs> a, if they need that something so simple, um, and b going through the bureaucracy of hosting an mm -hmm. EMR in America and yeah. serving it right. to other countries. Right. <coughs> And we have one of the doctors in Haiti who has offered to host a server in his hospital, which is cool. Um, and so we're still talking to him. Well, I guess the other thing is, too, there's restrictions. Some governments have, I, I, know, I think it's um, Germany, that you can't take information about people, residents of Germany, That's and right. export somewhere mm -hmm. else. You know, So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of restrictions that the locals have about how to use yeah. their data. and. It's always hard with healthcare. I'd be worried about the corruption and you know all that you said. Like they're not always open to you coming in. Yeah. Um, Haiti is probably a unique situation where they just they need any help they can get. But you said you do, uh, and there's a project going on in Ecuador too. Uh, we piloted it in Ecuador briefly. Yeah. Um, just when we were. The Ecuador would be a little more. Yeah. I'd be a little more worried about the corruption <coughs> and the and, um, power struggles and stuff. Yes. That happens. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Still, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I appreciate everybody coming in. Great ideas, yeah. right? So, like, I didn't know that there was. Do you use file attitude. encryption or desk encryption? Everything's encrypted here in the states. So I have um, the RSA keys. I have everything encrypted. Cool. So uh, explain how, how you doing encryption. So the encryption. Um, a, the whole server is encrypted in my house. So, okay. but on top of that, the data that comes back, we haven't merged it yet. Okay. Um, so you're, when you say encrypted, you're sitting on an encrypted file system? Yes, so okay. I extract the database. Uh, and th this service has an encrypted file system. Um, but when I extract the database out of these trips, I immediately encrypt everything. Okay, and then I take a de-identified version and I keep that separate. Oh, okay. Cool. And that's done through uses an RSA key to encrypt it, and then it creates a key. I don't I remember the tool, though. I don't remember the tool. OpenSSL. I think that's what it was. Yeah. And I use OpenSSH to connect here. Good. So I'm just wondering if you've given any thought to, like, a community um, donation site. What's that one that does the uh, <coughs> you know, Kickstarter? Kickstarter or we that did thing? Indiegogo. Yeah. That's how we raised a lot of the money for the initial equipment that we're, send, that we're sending out with the Wayne State School of Medicine. But I, I recently started, uh, we do have a website. Um, it's very primitive at the moment. Um, I think we do. Yep. I need to change the background to something a little more white. Yeah. But uh, this gives you a link to our IRC, uh, our repository, in the issue tracker. And then at the bottom, um, we've got the donate bitcoins and sure. the donate through PayPal. Gotta have bitcoins. So it's T E A M F E M R dot org. Yep. Team Femur dot org. Yeah. So how are you? How are you doing? Uh, you're not using DNS, so they're uh, they're connecting up just typing in the IP address. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing about SSL? Do you have a certificate? Over the internet? No. Yeah. Okay. If you want any help playing with that stuff? Yeah, we need to get our hands dirty in that yeah, stuff. I, mean, um, I can help you. We haven't gotten uh, to it yet. I can help you generate keys, uh, certificates, and stuff. And okay. Just, yeah, over. It's, you it's not that hard to do. Certificates, so you don't have to. Pay yeah, payments. or yeah, you can do self-signed certificates, or you can create your own CA to generate. That you can use to generate certificates. So you don't really want to go paying for certificates. Okay. Especially on temporary things. Yeah, I'll definitely reach out when we get our yeah, hands dirty. Yeah, that that'd be because awesome. It's not hard to do, but getting into it is hard. Right, which, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you figure it out, it's really not that it bad at all. So I'd be happy right. to help you with that. Right. We do That's have some, some videos out on YouTube of other presentations about that the topic. topic. So Yeah, yeah, because you really, you're, you're out there on the Wi-Fi. Really yeah, while it's assumed that a lot of these people don't have devices, um, you can't really assume, you can't power. safely the, the assume that. The problem in Haiti is different. <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, it's free, you know. Yeah, yeah, and if you're looking at forward compatibility or, or forward movement, if you you're going to get yeah. to a place where mm -hmm. you're going to be using this, we want to protect it. We want to lock it down. We do, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so build it with security in mind. Yeah. So these the doc, the doctors and nurses do they bring their own devices, their own laptops in? Yeah, and so that's 
the beauty of the web application is that we don't limit it to Android or iOS. I could go on the yeah. phone right now. Yeah. It's, so how you web is giving us a great place. It's awesome. Isn't it? It is. So how, how is it you're authenticating them? I mean, so you're not using SSL? You're not really concerned about that? This Authentication phrase? is just the user login. Okay. And there's a timeout on that user's session. That's what we've got right now. So it's authenticating, it's just not encrypting the session. Yeah. Here. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Well, Because I think one of the things would be you, you have a nurse who's never been really connected to anything and suddenly she comes in with a laptop <coughs> and wants to work with you and mm -hmm. doesn't know how to do key exchanges and doesn't have a key on that, that laptop. She should, no. Yeah, she shouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what's nice about it. You, you create the keys on the server and then the web browser you, does all the, the encrypted connections. And yeah. yeah, they should so have web browsers that are modern and have the keys that are... Well, they're mo most of them are Wayne State students, right? The, the users? The nurses and um, users are it's half and half right now about yeah. this or other, yeah. Um, so with the SSL, any browser that connects sees the certificate and matches it, and then all the data... It'll, it'll authenticate the certificate with a root CA. So if, if you're not paying for a certificate, if you, like, you, know, you can go to VeriSign or somebody and buy a certificate. Okay. If you're not going to pay for a certificate, then you want to do a, uh, create your own root CA. Okay. The only trick there is you have to install your root certificate in all the browsers. Great. Uh, but that's a matter, you know, you can point them to a, a, a URL. They can click on the URL and it'll install the root CA okay. in their browser. And that's Once they do that, then then all, all communications between that laptop and your server will be encrypted. And the purpose of that is so nobody can intercept. Yes. Right. Nobody yeah, can snoop on the wire. Everything's yeah. over the wireless yeah. or... Yeah. yeah. So, like, they can't see your user ID and password as they're... Right. As they're Even if the wireless connection is encrypted, like you have mm -hmm. uh, it's WPA yeah. or something set up, Yeah. That if they break that WPA, then they can see everything that's happening. So, yeah. you have WPA, and then on, and then within that tunnel, you have each user session is yeah. encrypted. Or, you know, you got this 600-foot Ethernet cable strung across. <laughs> it doesn't take much for somebody to go in there and, and, and yeah. splice into that and, and you know, tap off of it. Yeah. And none of that's covered by WPA. Right. So, so yeah, definitely. Interesting. Interesting.